Hey everybody, this is Geneva of Geneva's Closet Talk Show. How you doing today? I hope you're having a fabulous day. Hey to all of my subscribers, closet seekers, ladies in blue, and people that will sit there and never not a once ever say anything, but that is quite I people, you don't have to say anything if you don't want to, but could you please at least, at least like and share this video and subscribe to Geneva's Closet if you haven't already done so right here on YouTube and you can email me people at any time at Geneva's Closet. 22 at gmail.com and can you please follow me on Facebook at what at Geneva's Closets now let's get into what we're going to be talking about so people what I wanted to do was start a did you know segment in addition to the news that I do right here on Geneva's Closet talk show I wanted to start a did you know segment now what is that that is a lot of the times I'll hear something or I'll see something that sparks my interest and then I'll start doing some research on it and once I do my research I'll be like what I had no idea I wonder do the people know I wonder do they know did you know and that's why I want to call these particular videos that I do did you know now this one is gonna be did you know celebrity tea but it may not always be about celebrities it may be about some history some politics I don't know I have the slightest idea. All I know is that I usually come across some things that I'm shocked about. And I'm like, do you know this too? Because did nobody tell me answer thing. Didn't tell me anything. So in the midst of this video today of the Did You Know Celebrity Tea segment, I'll be showing you some video clips and things. So there's a possibility that there may be some technical difficulties. There may be a little glitching. But just work with me, people. Just work with me while I try to get this whole thing together. Now, let me tell you how I even came across this information. Let me tell you. what. So the other day, probably about a week ago, I was on Instagram, man, in my own Instagram business. And then I seen a posting that popped up that had Tempest Bledsoe and Daryl M. Bell. Now, when I say them names, you might be who, who, who you talking about? Tempest Bledsoe is the girl who played as Vanessa on the Cosby show. You know, Bill Cosby's the Cosby show. And Daryl M. Bell is the guy who played as Ron Johnson. I'm sorry, that played as Ron Johnson on A Different World. Now, the article has said, you know, basically congratulations because they done been married for 26 years. And I was like, no, they haven't. Now, I know that they've been together. Actually, they've been together ever since 1993, which is which was around the time that A Different World was ending. And at that time, um, Tempest was 20 years old and Daryl was 30 years old. So technically, 1993, 2019, they have been together for 26 years, but I didn't know anything about being married. So that's where my research started. I went and I did a little research on Wikipedia. It didn't mention anything about them being married. So then I kept on looking up some stuff. And then I came across an article written in 2009 by Straight From The A. So in this article, 2009, I guess rumors were circulating that Daryl and Tempest were married. So Daryl went on V103 radio, according to the article, to let it be known that not only were they not married, but if it's not broke, then don't fix it. And in the article, he also mentioned that he wanted to be the Stedman to her Oprah. And I was like, huh? Well, then when I kept reading, it said that Tempest were handling their finances which was a good thing because come to find out did you know that Daryl M. Bell aka Ron Johnson had squandered a 14 million dollar inheritance that he had received from his father all around that a different world time did you have any idea because no one told me anything I didn't know. Like I said, I knew that they were together. I don't know if you knew that, but I didn't know anything about a $14 million inheritance, which then kicked off my research. So before we get into this whole inheritance thing, let, let me give you a little background stuff on Mr. Daryl M. Bell. Okay. So now let's go to that part. So Daryl M. Bell was born May 10th, 1963 to Travers 
and Laura Bell Jr. He was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Now, his father, Travers Bell Jr., was the founder and owner of the only, so this is not only celebrity tea, this is also some black history for you people. This is some black history for you. He was the founder and owner of the only black owned member firm of the New York Stock Exchange. And Laura Bell, his mother was the director of employee relations at WGN TV. It says that um, Daryl's parents divorced when he was 16 years old. And at that time, his sister Rhonda was sent to a boarding school in Boston. So he has a sister Rhonda. And then it says Daryl's own education was at Dale Barton, an all boys Catholic preparatory boarding school in New Jersey that he said was run by monks. Uh, so the atmosphere was completely different than, you know, what was portrayed to us at Hillman College. So he had a total different experience so in this particular article that was written the article that I am reading now was written January 29th 1989 which was actually a year and two days after his father had passed away but let me keep reading so this is what he says in the article as I look back there were some very hard times for me being one out of four black students out of 400 students at Dale Barton. He said that he was a talkative student, but never the class clown. So I guess which is different than what we've seen at, you know, him playing Ron Johnson. And then he said that he, when he was a freshman, he was about 5'1", and you know, some prejudice things going on there at the school. So then he goes on to say, I'm trying to remember this off the top of the dome because I've read it so many times. Then he goes on to say that sometimes that he had never considered acting or comedy as a profession growing up in Chicago. I'm assuming not. With his father being the founder and owner of the only black owned member firm of the New York Stock Exchange and his mother working at WGN TV, I'm pretty sure he had business on his mind. But he said it was sometime, you know, in the in the late 80s, he had went to New York and he had just came back from seeing She's Gotta Have It and Spike Lee was there signing autographs and Daryl said that he went up to Spike Lee and was basically like, hey, if you want me to buy one of your $10, she got to have a t-shirt, then you got to put me in one of your next movies coming up. So he said him and Spike Lee, they was talking whatever. Spike gave him his address and told, told him to send him some pictures. He said, next thing he know, he was being, he was on the school days. And when was that? That was in 1988 was his big break playing Big Brother X-Ray on the movie School Days, in the movie School Days. So, and he said that that opportunity is where he actually met Kadeem Hardison, the one who played Dwayne Wayne on A Different World, which was his good friend. OK, he says, so that's how come when you see them on a different world, they seem so close because they had already built a great relationship on school days, which he said is also where he met Jasmine Guy, who played as Whitley, because we all know that Whitley, too, played on school days. Don't we love that movie? Oh, that's one of the black people's all time whatever movie. So basically, that is a little background on Mr. Woo. On Mr. Daryl, but now let's get into his father. Okay, there was father right there. So basically, let me let me let me find this article. Let me find this article. So basically, Daryl, Daryl, um, Travers, Travers J. Bell Jr. Travers J. Bell Jr. was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Um, in the Ida B. Wells public housing project on the south side of Chicago, he set a goal of owning an investment bank and basically he made it happen. It says that Travers Bell began his career as a messenger in the Chicago office of the investment bank Dempsey Tegler, Tegler and company primarily because his father had worked at the bank in operations for 15 years. Due to the mentorship of the investment bank's owner, Dempsey Tegler and Mr. Bell, unrelenting 
worth ethic. He was later appointed operations manager of a 15 member office firm, Strauss, Blosser and McDowell, which Dempsey Tegler acquired basically in so many words in 1970 mr bell at the age of 30 formed daniels and bell inc a securities firm on wall street with co-founder willie e daniels who was age 33 at the time mr daniels later left the company to go start his own restaurant business but now let's get into the real um by 1971 travis bell jr had became the first owner and founder of a black owned member firm of the New York Stock Exchange. With only $175,000 in capital, he had developed Daniels and Bell Inc., a securities firm on Wall Street, which by the time of his untimely death in 1988, he died of a heart attack. So Travers Bell Jr. died of a heart attack in January of 1988. Mind you, school days came out in 1988. So these are all the things that was going on. So the father passed away at the same time that Daryl had just started his acting career. That's them right there. Mr. Bell is in the middle. Here go his father, and then there go Daryl on the other side. It says his, his untimely death in 1988, but his net worth had grown to a nearly $15 million. Travers was also a major shareholder in Freedom National Bank and Coca Line Chocolate Company, the company that made chocolate chips for Nabisco. But it says that, so basically, what happened? <clears throat> is I'm assuming that Mr. Bell, like I said, he passed away January of 1988. He was 46 years old. Was he 46 years old? Yes, he was 46 years old. He died of a heart attack. Now, at the time that he passed away, Daryl, Ron Johnson, was 25 years old. So I don't know if Travers, the father, had put in his will he had his son in the will not thinking that he was going to pass away so early but daryl was 25 years old and everything was left to him uh so basically he left everything to him okay and it says as daryl it's a different world stint was coming to an end in 1993. He was an embarking on a new dynamic in his life, a six month court battle after Daryl beloved father, Travers passed away at the age of 46 from a heart attack. He left his multi-million dollar business to Daryl. However, after Daryl ended up losing most of his father's $14.9 million due to inexperience, his dad's widow and two of Daryl's aunts, Travers sisters took him to court. Travers Bell had also been major shareholder in a uh, freedom national bank, which was taken over by federal authorities three years after he died. In addition, Coca line chocolate company filed a chapter 11 bankruptcy petition in 1992. Oh, Oh, that man, this man worked so hard. And then for his son, mm. I can just imagine if his daddy knew what his son did. A superior court, court probate judge in Morris County, New Jersey ruled that actor Daryl Bell wasted the $14 million estate left by his late father out of imprudence rather than wrongdoing as charged in the suit by the mama and Travis' two sisters. Which Bell had no, while Bell had no experience in business, court records indicate he put his mother and sister on the payroll and racked up a huge debt on a corporate credit card as assets and revenue plummeted at the firm. The widow of the late founder, Laura Bell, which is Daryl's mother, and two of his sisters. Joanne Walker and Karen Bell McLaren. And here go a picture of Claren Bell um, McLaren. And I think I actually found the other sister, Joanne Walker, but since I wasn't sure, I didn't want to put a picture of her. But this is Dar this is Travers' sister that sued Daryl. Okay. Uh whew. 
And Cameron Clint, foul suit charging the young actor Daryl had mis mismanaged the established New York securities firm. And this was written in Jet Magazine, May of 1993. After it was all said and done, Daryl's father business plummeted. A net worth of $14.9 million had went to $1 million, people. The business owed several debtors, including the IRS, which had a $2.3 million stake in the estate at the time. It says in the suit, Daryl's aunts and his mother had charged that he had mismanaged the business and misappropriated monies. They had asked the court to name new executors of the will and asked that co-executors Daryl and the grandfather, remember the grandfather that I showed you in the picture with Travers and Daryl, be held accountable for replacing the $5 million they maintained had disappeared from the estate. Mm. So his mama and uh, Travers' two sisters wasn't going. They believe Daryl and his grandfather, Travers' father, was up to some. In dismissing the case after a six-month month trial, Judge Stanton attributed the firm's hard times to Bell's inexperience rather than malicious intent. This estate, this is what the attorney said, this estate has turned out to be a disaster. It is all very regrettable. And that was in a Jet Magazine 1993 article. There they go right there. The grandfather and all of them. And this is, I just seen this on Daryl's page now, his Instagram page, with uh, Muhammad Ali. So that's basically what's going on. Now, when I had heard this story, which I had no idea, did you know? Had you any idea that these things were going on? Did you know? Did you even know that his father was the first black person to own his own firm. Did anyone know that? Because I had no idea that his father was the founding owner of the only black owned member firm of the New York Stock Exchange. That's black history in itself. And I'm pretty sure you didn't know. I had no idea that Ron Johnson's father had some history, black history. But when I had read about Daryl uh, Bell, First thing I thought about was his character on a different world. Cause don't you remember his character on a different world? His father owned a car dealership, but Ron wanted to play music. He wasn't even fully into college. He wanted to play music, but his father wanted him to come into the business and learn the whole, you know, car dealership business, which is not what he wanted. And when I was doing my research on Daryl M. Bell, it said that he really liked music. That was his passion was, was music. So I, you know, I was like, so, you know, I figured his dad probably wanted him to be in the business, but maybe that's not where his mind was at because if it was, then, you know, I know 25 is kind of young, but maybe his mind would have been more on trying to preserve the business than to completely, you know, just blow money. So it, it could not have been on business, especially if during this time that you're going through these lawsuits and stuff, you're working on a different world because a different world went off for six seasons from 1987 to, did it say from 1987, from 1987 to 1993, but it says his big break was in 1988, which was the same year that his father died. And, uh, pfft. yeah, don't you know that scripture where it say that you got to leave your child in inheritance? Uh, um, people be thinking that leaving your child in inheritance means leaving them money. That ain't what it means. It means leaving them some knowledge because Daryl's father worked pretty dang on hard for his business for his son to squander that money around. So that wasn't the inheritance. Some, some knowledge would have been the best thing for him. But anyway, let me show you. The so now do you want to see the father? Let, let's let let's let's see the father. Now I'm gonna have to turn this volume down a little bit just to make sure it's not too much glitching when I'm playing it. So hopefully it's not too much. But no. I think being an investment bank, a black investment bank, an independent black investment bank, is something that is necessary in America, and uh, I intend to maintain it. The world is real, and uh, to 
uh, to have ideas that, uh, and ideals that, you know, you feel one must live by, then you have to be in, you mentioned earlier, you have to be a missionary. And, and, and I think I tried to make that clear, you know, I'm not a missionary. I'm an investment banker. An investment banker has to be real. real. Travers Bell is an American at the cutting edge of capitalism, a man sensitive to social and human values who believes that economic equality is black America's final frontier of social justice. Travers heads the first and only black-owned member firm of the New York Stock Exchange, Daniels and Bell. Travers grew up in a Chicago housing project, the son of a chauffeur. It was there, he says, that he learned the street smarts that now serve him so well on Wall Street. Bell is a man who sets a goal and then goes after it, while trying to keep life in perspective. In this edition of Pinnacle, we'll meet 44-year-old Travers Bell, a man who's journeyed a long way from those Chicago housing projects to Wall Street. Travers talks about his best friend in life, his father, and he lends a rare perspective on how blacks need more opportunities to cash in on capitalism. Now, I want you to know that this interview was done with Travers Bell Jr., and his father is Travers Bell Sr. And um, 1986, which was actually two years before he passed away, so he was 44 years old at the time that he did this interview. Again, this was two years before he unexpectedly died, had a heart attack, and passed away in his, um, I think he was in New York, in his New York home. So this is another, this is now Travers Jr. talking about his father, Travers Sr., which is Daryl's father and grandfather. So you see them in this clip, this short video clip. There were a lot of lessons that I learned through uh, interaction with my father uh, that weren't apparent to me at the time they were happening. And uh, at the time that they were happening, he was sort of... Uh, non-flexible, but more importantly, as opposed to others that I knew who were in a similar environment that I was, uh, I was always able to lean on something that my father told me or uh, that he said I should be ca careful of, and uh, some of the rules and regulations that uh, he laid down uh, have had uh, uh, really not only application of that particular time, but as life has rolled on for me, they still work, and they still do. I mean, he's a sage old fella. He can come up with some most amazing things you ever heard in your life that he does, that other people, they, I don't know, he's one and only that can do it. <laughs> That's the way it works. It's just that he just, he, he just got it in him. Were you a sassy kid? I don't think I was sassy, but I've always been pretty sure of myself. Uh, but it, sassy is not the word. I was a kid that was raised uh, all the way, and still do. I, in fact, most people even comment about it. Everybody is yes, ma'am, and no, sir, to me. And my, my father simply wouldn't allow us to address anybody in any other way. Now, this was a long interview, so what I tried to do was take a little clips and stick them in there, the most important things that I thought, you know, because like I said, did you know, have you ever seen the father before? Did you hear these things? Did you know about this part of history and him in the New York Stock Exchange? So, he go a little bit more history on Mr. Travers J. Bell Jr. Uh, learning how to jump a fence without stopping uh, being able to move fast on the run, playing marbles, I was a good marbles champion. And I remember, I think that's one of the experiences that uh, helps me today. I can recall, you know, I was a pretty good marble shooter, and in fact, I won a couple of neighborhood trophies for being a good marble shooter, but I can recall the big kids coming around and, uh, you know, they would shoot for a while, and if you beat them, then there was a word it would call scramble. And the scramble meant that the big kid just took all the marbles. There was no more marble game. Uh, and that's a good lesson to take from time to time, is that uh, you don't always play by a rule sometimes uh, if you want all the marbles. As a young man, Bell's father introduced him to the securities business in Chicago along LaSalle Street. His first job was as a messenger. Travers says from day one, he was sold. They gave me this briefcase. I took this 
basically it was a group of very haggard and raggedy papers to this brokerage firm. I gave it to this guy, and he gave me a certified check for $175,000. And I said, my, <laughs> they're paying cash for paper in the, around here, and I, I'm interested in this. And, and, and that was it. That turned the, that turned the cylinder right there. And Uh, to structure a, a position in the American economy, one has to have a, a understanding of the market systems and be able to participate in those market systems. Pretty proud? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, we're, uh, uh, we're, we, we've done things and are doing things that no one ever thought of before. And uh, I'm sure no one thought possible. Uh, that could be done by a brokerage firm, a minority, a black brokerage firm, standing on their own. That uh, there wasn't this organization or that organization. Uh, we, we do the same things everybody else do. One of the things you wanted to do was expose more black people to capitalism. Mission accomplished? Well, uh, mission continually to be accomplished, absolutely. Uh, we, I mean, the, the first of what we've done uh, just uh, are so numerous. We've done about everything that you can think of. Uh, I think that we have uh, uh, done, done a, a uh, you know, a, a good job, but mission certainly not accomplished. Mission is a long way from being accomplished. And this one is him talking about, he mentions his children. He doesn't mention their names, but he mentions his children and his money. When you think about your, your upbringing, um, what the kids back at the project would really think. They've never heard of an investment banker, I know. Mm -hmm. um, but what's important is that you have, you're making some money. Um, what's the best part of life right now for you in terms of what that money can buy? What's the best part? Well, my kids' education. That uh, is, uh, you know, sort of pride to me. Uh, You've got two children, boy and girl. Ah, uh, yes. And... Uh, uh, I can tell you they're both uh, terribly independent, and uh, but I, I would say on 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 basis of times when they've made decisions that uh, you know I haven't agreed with uh, uh, doesn't bother me. Uh, but I think that they they have the result of it is uh, the effort and uh, time and love that uh, I have put into it and and still maintain of it, 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 it developed uh, very nicely. So your kids know that you love them? Oh yeah, no question about that. You never, I have a, uh, a, a banner over my desk upstairs in my room, which is from my daughter, and it says, uh, uh, everybody has a father, but uh, only a few people have a daddy, and uh, love Rhonda. So I think that says it. So if his father, so at the time his father did this interview, Daryl was 23 years old. And one of the video clips I didn't even play for you where it said how long the father said he was working 15, 17 hours trying to make sure that he got his craft and stuff together to make sure that he know every ins and outs of the business just so you can pass away you hand it down to your son and your son completely squandered it i tried to find pictures of his sister rhonda and because i found some articles on the sister when she got married back in the 80s so i found who her husband and stuff is matter of fact i even found the nieces and the nephews the nieces and nephews did not have not a damn picture up of their mama but i definitely found Daryl's nieces and nephews. I found a family photo of them. I was trying to find the mother to see if I can find any pictures of her or based on my research, find other family members and see that they have a picture. I think I found some things, but since I couldn't confirm it, I didn't want to throw anybody's pictures up here and say that they somebody that they're not. But basically what I'm trying to say to you people, what I'm asking you is, did you know, did you have any idea how would you feel if you had sat there and worked that hard and then passed some stuff on to your kids that you would hope that your kids would know how to maintain and take care of you would hope that they would at least try and then find out that they done blew, messed up all of your stuff to the point that to this day, Tempest, Tempest is like, no, because she was with him in 93 
Because in 93, he was 30. She was 20. This is the time he was going through the lawsuits and stuff. So she was with him at that time. I think after she seen that, she was like, I don't know. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm going to handle the finances. You know. Because it says that, because it said the Tempest in uh, Straight from the Eight, that article written in 2009, it said the Tempest was the breadwinner. That she was breadwinning stuff and something, something about they had been in a, in a reality, something back in 2009. I don't know, whatever it was, I had seen it. I just wanted to show you this. Did you know, people? I hope you enjoyed this edition of Did You Know Celebrity Tea about who? Ron Johnson, a.k.a. No, Daryl M. Bell, Daryl Michael Bell, a.k.a. Uh, Ron Johnson. And just to let you know that Tempest Bledsoe, like I said, she's she was also born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. And right now her birthday is August 4th, 1973. She is currently 45 years old so that means that Daryl is 56 years old so she's going on she'll no wait she's 55 right because they how many years did I say they apart oh they 10 years apart so she's 45 and he is right because she's going on 46 years old and he's 56 dang he 56 I didn't even realize he was 56 but anyway people there is a book out it's called in the black and it talks about Travers M. Bell and him being <coughs> the owner and founder of his own firm, the only black owned firm on the New York Stock Exchange. And it's called NV Black, Black Enterprise. Now, I seen that it said that it's on Amazon. What is it called? In the Black, a history of African Americans on Wall Street, 1699 to say only one left. But you may be able to find a book somewhere else, but I just put it up there part of your history you may want to know my plan is to leave the link to the actual video to, to Travers uh J Bell's um video his interview that I actually found on where on YouTube please make sure you like and share this video people and subscribe to Geneva's closet if you haven't already done so right here on YouTube make sure you do that and stuff is and yeah Please leave your comments and tell me what you think about this. Did you already know? Did you know that Tempest and Daryl were dating? Did you even know that? You had no idea. Did you think that they was married? Not nah, ain't married. Daryl said, if it's not broke, then why fix it? And did you even know that, uh, what is her name? What is her name? Um, what is the lady that was supposed to be on? Wait a minute. Let me find it. Because I got it. I got it right here. Wait, it's coming to me. It's coming to me. Nope, it ain't came to me. But Lena Horn, did you know that Lena Horn was supposed to be the teacher on a different world originally? And did you know that Meg Ryan was supposed to be on there? But since Meg Ryan was on there, that's when they put the other white girl that was on there that I can't even remember her name. I forgot her name. Uh, Melissa. With any Melissa song. <laughs> But did you know that? I had no idea until I looked it up in the, in the thing. I had no idea that Meg Ryan was supposed to be on there. But anyway, people, tell me what you think it is. You all have a fabulous rest of your day, and I'll talk to you later, people. Bye.